Hello and welcome to today's episode of Turning Readers into Writers. And this week we're looking at the question of what do you do when you don't like what you write? It's quite normal in the beginning to be very critical of your own words. You have your literary heroes that you want to write like. You want to be as be able to craft a sentence as well as them. But when you read your own work back, you think, oh no, it's dreadful. So what can you do about that? How can you get to your own style of writing and the tone of your own voice? Well, let's find out. Welcome to the Turning Readers into Writers podcast, where I teach beginner writers how to find the time and confidence to write their first novel. I'm your host, Emma Desi, and I'm so excited that you're here. Thank you for joining me today, because if you've been longing to write your novel for forever, this is the place to be. Have you been wanting to start writing your first novel but have been feeling uncertain about how to get started? Well, I have a simple resource for you called The Three Easy Steps to Start Writing Your Novel. This simple cheat sheet will help you begin your writing journey by resolving that perennial problem of how to find the time to actually write. The answer is super simple and super actionable. And if you wanted to, you can get started today. So go to emmadesi.com forward slash three easy steps and start writing today. Well, hello. And as I said in the introduction, um, today's podcast is all about what happens when you don't like what you write, because um, that happens to a lot of people. They don't like what they write. You you write it all down. You're feeling really good. Then you read it back. You think, oh, no, that's awful. That sucks. (laughs) I don't like that at all. And I can assure you, you're not alone. I see this question from a lot of people. And how do you overcome this? How do you move past not liking the work that you do? Um, Being insecure about your work is not exclusive to you. Believe me, I have spent many years doubting, if not every word I write, certainly most of what I write. And I still do. And I go back and I read over things I haven't looked at in a while. I think, oh, my goodness, really? Did I write that? And was I pleased with that? And so that's when the rewriting comes in. Um, And that's why we edit. But like you, you know, I want to write like my write like my literary heroes um, and I can never see my stories or my word choices as being equal to them. So one of my favourite, favourite authors is Kate Atkinson. I think she's just a genius with words and I find her so, so funny and I wish that I could write like her. But unfortunately, it's just never going to happen for me. But that's okay. My words don't need to be as good as hers. They just need to be good enough and I need to be able to tell a good enough story. Me, you, we need to find a way of getting over that insecurity. So is that you? You know, um, do you sort of hate everything that you write or if not hate it, you think it's not good enough, you want it to be better? Well, if it is like you, don't let that self-doubt stop you from writing because the more that you write, the more confident you will become. So everybody has moments of insecurity, but the thing you have to do is just keep on writing. You've just got to keep on getting those words out and you can fix them later. You can improve and look up the thesaurus and get just the right word. You can rephrase a whole paragraph if you need to, but um, just keep going because that insecurity and then that rewording and that fixing, well, that's all part of the creative process. And I don't think it's just for us writers. I think all artists go through this. Um, But there we go. It's part of the beast. What can you do? But there's also a good chance that your first draft, your rough draft, well, it isn't great. You know, it's not going to be brilliant. Not even, let's think, who's a great writer? Well, for me, Kate Atkinson. So not even Kate Atkinson's first draft is going to be brilliant. And that's okay. What we have to remember is what Anne Lamott says, and she says, all you need is your first S-H-I-T-T-Y draft, (laughs) but um, you keep on writing because it's only once you've got something down on paper that you can go back and you can make it better. And as somebody once said, that is why it's called the rough draft. One of the things you can do, and which is always an unpopular answer, is to just keep on writing. A lot of people don't find it very helpful. What they want to hear is something pragmatic and um, practical that they can do that's actually going to improve their confidence. But unfortunately, there is no sort of magic pill or um, magic course that is going to transform you into a confident writer. The only way to do that really is to just continue writing, keep on working and build a body of work. Because as you begin to see your work grow, 
you get better at it, your writing muscle will get stronger, the words will come more easily, you'll find it more easy to work. Um, and then your confidence will build because you're not finding it as difficult as you once did. Now, this body of work, it doesn't need to be a whole catalogue of, you know, a back catalogue of novels. It can just be the one novel. It can even just be a couple of short stories, depending on where you're starting from. But as you begin to see those pages build or as you see the words build on your um, your laptop, a laptop on your screen, that's going to give you a sense of progression or achievement. Um, you'll see all the, the pages on your desk get fatter. You'll take more pride in the work that you do because you're creating something. And when you see that you're creating all this original material, you'll slowly, slowly start to build your confidence. You'll slowly, slowly start to have faith in yourself that you've got what it takes. And when you, as an artist, as a creative, are creating something good for yourself, it makes you feel happy. The serotonin is released and that in itself can give you a confidence boost. And that confidence is what you need to write again and to write more. So I've talked about this before. It's like this really nice virtuous circle. Um, the confidence and the creativity it makes you feel fabulous about yourself. You get more confident. And so you go at it again and again. And each time you're writing more and you're writing better because you're working that writing muscle. So you're producing this circle of positivity for yourself and the circle of positivity replaces the self-limiting beliefs that you carry around with you about your work. And eventually you'll figure out, yes, you can finish your novel and you'll realise that your goal is absolutely doable. You can finish it. It's just a matter of doing it, lifting your confidence and gaining momentum. And when you're writing, I think it's really, really important to be writing for yourself um, first and foremost. You're writing for your own pleasure and for your own enjoyment and when you're doing that you are, as I said, releasing that serotonin and you're taking the pressure away. So if at the back of your mind you're always worrying about what your friends and family are going to say about your writing or what a possible agent or publisher is going to think, then you are putting a lot of pressure on yourself to produce work that's at the standard of your favourite published novelist. This is a novelist who has been writing for a long, long time and has been through the editing process many, many times. You're never going to produce that level of writing on your first attempt, with or without an editor's help, and that's just a fact. You know, if I think about, um, going back to Kate Atkinson again, if I think about her, she's been writing for many, many years. She's worked with many editors. She has learnt with every redraft she's written with every editor she's spoken to. And just remember that traditionally published books, well, they go through up to six different editors before they're published. So you can imagine just how much feedback that writer gets from them, just how much that writer learns every time they write a book, every time they go through the editing process. I know for myself, every time I go through the editing process with my editor, I come back you know, I learn something new. There's a new nugget of information, a new nugget of knowledge, a new gem of craft that she has taught me. And I can take that into the next book that I write. So at this stage, as a beginner writer, just write for yourself. What stories do you like to read? What characters do you identify? Whatever that is, that's what you should be putting into your book. Those are the sorts of stories that you should be writing because that's what gives you pleasure. And when you're happy in your writing, then that's going to show in your writing and the reader is much more likely to enjoy it as well. I just want to put in a little point as well here about grammar and spelling and vocabulary and punctuation and all those sorts of technical things. I want to suggest to you that you don't need to worry about those right now. Those things are secondary to your storytelling. Those are things that, you know, beta readers can sort out, editors can sort out, friends and family who will do uh, a proofread for you. They can help you sort all those things out. Your superpower is the storytelling. Your superpower is not being a grammarian or um, being a a linguist or anything like that, you are a storyteller and just remember that. Um, for those of you that are in the UK, you might know um, a, a show called Countdown and there is a lady called Susie Dent on that show and she is an expert at language and vocabulary and 
looks at the history of language, the origins of language, I think there isn't a word she doesn't know. You don't need to have that level of expertise. Your expertise is storytelling. So stick with that. Remember that. And as I mentioned, you will get feedback as you go along. So um, if you are just beginning your writing career, you know, external feedback can be hugely helpful and encouraging. A lot of people get a bit nervous about doing this, but it's one of those things that you just need to face your fear and do. You need to put your work out there because remember, if you want to be a published novelist, people are going to read your books. So start now, start small, start with people who are not critics, but who are also writers like yourself or just a friend who enjoys reading. So if you're not yet part of one, try looking for a local writing group, because not only are you going to find like minded people from whom you can get feedback, but the very fact you're sharing your work will also help boost your confidence because you'll you'll be around other people who are at the same stage as you or perhaps just a little further along. So you can either sort of bond together because you're at the same stage or you can look at those who are further along and take inspiration from them. Uh, many of you, I'm sure, are aware of NaNoWriMo, and they host, uh, globally, I believe, they host writing sessions all over the world. I know there's one here in Edinburgh. If there's one here, I'm sure there's bound to be one near you, um, and I will put a link to that in the show notes for you. I'm going to add a caveat, though, to their writing groups. Those people, those people who read your work, they are offering their opinion, and their opinion is not gospel. So if you don't agree with something that they've said, particularly if it's just one person who feels that way, you don't have to follow through on their words. But if there is a general consensus that the story needs a little extra of this or a bit of that taking out, then that's worth you thinking about and perhaps acting on. Don't take it personally. Remember, people are there trying to help you. um, But it's your story, your words. If you don't agree with what they say, you don't have to take them up on it. So bear that in mind. If you're nervous to give your stories to people that you know, and I myself get a bit embarrassed when people say to me, oh, I've just read your book, and I'm never quite sure how to respond. Um, So if you're like me and get a little bit embarrassed or nervous at the thoughts of people reading your stories, you can always employ beta readers. You will need to pay them initially because they're taking you know, time out of their day um, and taking energy and thought into commenting on your work. But as your confidence evolves, you're going to need to rely on them less and less. And eventually you're going to get to a point where you, people are going to be happy to be to read your work because they enjoy your work and they really like being part of that initial process and seeing how you're evolving. But in the meantime, you know, having a stranger give an honest opinion of your work might be what you need to boost your confidence and reconnect you with your writing instincts. Because remember, you are your worst critic um, and you might be pleasantly surprised that other people don't feel that your work is as bad as you do. (laughs) This next suggestion I have for you, it's something I find almost impossible to do, um, but it might just be what you need. And that is to overwrite your work. So when you're writing the first draft of your novel, write more than you need, really overwrite it, put everything down that is to do with your story, really go into too much detail about what's going on. So, you know, for example, if you are writing a 70,000 word novel, write 85 to 90,000 words, go over and above what you need, because then when you go to edit, you're going to cut out all the extraneous stuff that you don't like, and then you'll be left with just the good stuff. And believe me, when I tell you that there is a lot of good in amongst the bad, it might just be that you can't see it yet. And that's why you're not liking what you write. Self-editing can be hugely rewarding because you're taking a paragraph that initially you don't like and then you're going to craft it. You're going to work on it and think about it and you're going to turn it into something that you are proud of. And that feeling is fantastic and it feeds into that boosting of your confidence that comes with the writing muscle workout. Um, So, you know, enjoy that self-editing process because you are crafting, making it better, working on it. um, And you're going to be validating your work for yourself, not somebody else doing it for you. You're going to be boosting your confidence with seeing how much you can improve a piece of writing and you're going to validate your worth and your writing skill to yourself. 
another thing you can try, and I think I think actually you should do it rather than try it, it's something that all authors should do, is to read your work out loud. Because when we when we read things in our head, it can make perfect sense to us. In our brains, we can see the image that we're trying to write about. We can see the conversation that these two people are having. But it's only once you start to read your words out loud Do you see, oh, I haven't actually said that they're in the kitchen or I haven't said that they're climbing up a hill. You've taken it for granted that the reader can see inside your head. And so when you read it out loud, those errors um, will (laughs) they'll pop up and you'll you'll be able to fix it. It also helps you pick out those sentences that jar that don't read well. So again, when you're reading it silently in your head, you can fly through it. But once you start to read it out loud, you'll see that perhaps the sentence construction isn't as good as it could be. It doesn't flow as easily. You want to make it as easy a sentence as possible for your reader so that they um, so it's just smoother and a more enjoyable read for them. So by reading your work out loud, you're going to hear for yourself not what's not working and equally crucial is what is working. So you'll see for yourself what is working. I just want to sort of finish a little bit on just a bit of encouragement for you, because if you know you're a beginner writer, I want you to give yourself some grace. Success comes with time, and um, craft comes with time. The writers that you admire, that I admire so much, well, they've been honing their craft for many, many years. You know, they were once where you are now. They were once a beginner writer doing their short stories, going to the classes, doing the workshops, equally full of self-doubt, equally dubious of every word that they wrote. But they kept going and they kept going and they kept going. If you listen to um, author interviews on YouTube or on the radio, you're going to hear that even the best sellers still struggle with imposter syndrome and can still be convinced that their newest release, the newest book that they've written, that's the book that everyone's going to realise. They've just been lucky all this time. Finally, everyone's going to see that they're not worthy of the success that they've had. So they too can struggle with self, self-worth. self You know, most writers have a drawer full of work that they would never want to show to the outside world. But they wouldn't be the writers they are today if they hadn't written all those words that they're now ashamed of. So you are not alone. So there's a few um, ideas there for you to try. You know, the old sort of unpopular one of keep writing, keep writing, keep writing, build that writing muscle. Don't forget to write for yourself, because when you write for yourself, you take the pressure off, you enjoy the process much more. And that will show in your writing as well. And it'll help boost your confidence. Get feedback. Really, really important to get feedback because at some stage or other, you're going to have to show your work to somebody, especially if you want it to be published. And you can try overwriting and write too much, too much, too much so that you can pay it all back. And so you're left with just the good stuff. And then finally, read your work out loud. That's going to um, highlight all the things that don't sound quite right, that aren't working. But equally, it's also going to highlight for you what is working. And remember, give yourself grace. You are a beginner writer. You are on this journey for the long haul. You've got a lot to learn, but you've already learnt a lot as well. Think about where you were one year ago, two years ago, and where you're going to be in the next year or two years. So give yourself grace. Everything comes with time. Just stick at it. All right, that's everything for today. I hope you found that helpful. I hope it's made you feel a bit better about yourself and your writing if this is something you struggle with something we all struggle with but you've got to face the fear and do it anyway because even if you're not loving the words you write I know there is an audience out there for your words all right take care and I shall see you next time well that's it for this week I hope you found it useful if you're interested in becoming a part of a safe and friendly community of like-minded writers who want to write their first novel go to my facebook group at emmadesi.com forward slash turning readers into writers i can't wait to see you in there you can find the show notes for this episode and all the others at emmadesi.com forward slash podcast thanks again for joining me and i can't wait to get to know you better soon